Hi, everyone. Welcome to our new course. So we, we decided to make a, an experiment and launch a course in collaboration. We had a chat with Ivan. Uh, there was a podcast episode a few months ago where we talked about um, um, what, well, basically about analytics and stock markets, right? And after that, we had a chat about that it would be nice to actually have a course about that. And here we are actually launching the course. So welcome, everyone. And today we will talk about the course, which will start when? In three weeks, right? Yeah, 15th of April. So today we'll talk about the logistics of the course, what to expect, we'll answer your questions, and then the actual course will start in a couple of weeks. Okay, so there is, um, you can ask any question you want about the course, we will answer these questions at the end. So you can go to Slido and type in this SMAZ, Stock Market Analytics Zoom Camp, or you can go to YouTube and there is a pinned link. You click on that link and you can ask your questions here. Okay. So the plan for today, yeah. this is the plan for today. We'll talk about uh, the um, course, um, the logistics of the course. And yeah, you see what we'll talk about today. So, Juan, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Ivan, or Ivan. Um, I work uh, at Google uh, for uh, 10 years as a business intelligence analyst. So this is my strongest skill. And probably you will see a lot of analytical charts and Python color programming during the course. I also have uh, um, two degrees in uh, computer science and finance and data analytics. So I can do a bit of programming and um, I follow markets and do a bit of trading for myself. So three years ago, I, I created the project vitaminvest.com and um, for, for all three years, I write long creeds articles about um, stock markets analytics, different aspects of it. And uh, last but not least, I'm a retail investor, so I'm not a professional market participant or an institution or a company connected with financial markets, but I do invest my own money and trying to get some profits from it. Next slide, please. Yeah, this is me. I think this picture I took in one of the streams, I liked it. So I use, use it in... Um, the only place actually where I use it is um, the course launch slides. Okay, so my name is Alexei and I am uh, the founder of Data Talks Club. So this is the community that organizes courses like the one we're talking about today. And uh, yeah, if you don't know much about Data Talks Club, so you can go to the this website datatalks.club and see what we're up to. Apart from courses, we have a bunch of other things. And uh, I am an instructor in three courses that we have in Data Talks Club. And by the way, all these courses are free. So these are the machine learning engineering course, data engineering course, and the MLOps course, which the, the last one starts in uh, a couple of months. So, and this is my full-time activity. I used to be a data scientist, um, not anymore. Now I'm doing a bit of everything, like running the community, doing courses, um, speaking with ChatGPT, writing Django code. Anyways, yeah, that's me. And um, before launching the course, we wanted to know um, if there is interest in knowing uh, these things, uh, the course content, in learning this, uh, picking up the skills. So we run, a, we run a questionnaire and we want to share some results. Okay, um, there are a few slides on, on the results. Um, and um, yesterday it was 820 people who were registered. Today it's about 900 people. It's a 
big success already. And as you can see now, there are many, many countries. Our mistake was not to make it obligatory field and not to do a uh, country verification. So that's why I limited uh, and manually checked all countries that have more than one uh, submissions. Uh, so we are 55 countries, participants. Next slide, please. Like how many variations of United States of America do you have in the oh, data? It was United States, USA, with dots, without dots, uh, the United States, um, many variations. And many countries, uh, I learned like Deutschland, Espana, and other languages, so people write anything, and sometimes I don't even know if, if it is a country or not. You had a lot of pan cleaning this data. Yeah, yeah. normal work of a data analyst. Yeah, we can clearly see that you work as a ABI analyst. So th this is a, a slide about five um, questions. And as you can guess, um, experience is important. And we want to know um, your various uh, types of experience that, that you have already to adjust the course. The, the first thing is it's the most balanced experience, work experience. So we have students, junior level, mid-level, senior level, and management. Probably um, it may be somewhat harder for students and management uh, to get uh, the full uh, benefits of a course because uh, they, they need to do hands-on programming and they need to have access to uh, stock markets, trading, brokers, and trade with real money, ideally. Um, but other than that, uh, it's quite balanced data set. Then, um, Programming and analytical experience uh, looks very similar. Uh, we have a lot of intermediate and advanced um, developers and analysts, probably because we have many people joining from Data Talks Club who uh, had previous courses on similar topics. I think um, there won't be any difficult uh, prob uh, difficulties with programming or analytics for those who are who don't have any experience or who are beginners in programming or uh, analytical things, it may be harder. So you might need to, to take uh, some short course uh, on programming um, in Python uh, or basic um, analytics in Python. And next thing is stock markets or other financial markets experience. So we have um, more beginners and no experienced people. Um, this is a signal for me to explain everything um, that I um, download as a data source and why I, uh, I do this, explain economic concepts and how they are connected with financial markets. And uh, last uh, thing is trading with a broker. So the majority of people, um, they do not have experience or um, are beginners. Um, I can say that I probably um, I'm somewhere between a beginner and intermediate, uh, but we will include um, screenshots um, or uh, of, of our trading apps. And we hope that you can uh, create a system and use this system to make predictions and place trades. Next slide. I have a question. What did you use for creating this um, charts? Yeah, it's a call-up uh, plot express and they asked chat GPT. So I I saw them somewhere. Um, I think it was simply wallstreet.com. Um, I never used it before, so I'm innovating for myself just today. So, Looks cool. Thank you. Okay. Um, so next field. Um, we asked how you want to apply your knowledge. Um, 344 people replied, um, and this is a word cloud. So it's uh, uh, words are bigger if they are more common. Uh, as you can see, uh, people want to learn about, want to apply this knowledge for stocks trading, data analysis, financial investments, financial markets, um, and everything uh, that you see here. But this is not 
enough. On the next slide, I, I wanted to explore more and to understand what are the ideas. Um, so I asked uh, ChatGPT via API to get the major ideas from the replies and to put in brackets a number of participants who voted for these ideas. And uh, they, they could write this in a free uh, text form. So um, the majority of, of you uh, guessed correctly that we will try to analyze stock markets. We will try to create algorithmic trading robot within a set of um, lectures. And we will try to create an MVP, a simplest uh, possible uh, prototype. So we won't go too far into programming. We won't go too far into stock markets or particular markets or particular models, but we will do everything in the simplest possible manner. Really cool use of ChatGPT or GPT in general. That was the first time I tried this as well. Looks really cool. But it's not allowed to go at Google. It's uh, mm -hmm. external, <laughs> use external uh, things. Um, okay, so this is the questionnaire we wanted to learn about you, and thanks for sharing all that with us. And I think we already covered, uh, Ivan, you already talked a little bit about the prerequisites when you talked about these rad radar charts, do, do, yeah. do you call them radar charts? Yeah, but right. so to, to make it more explicit, um, this is what you should have, this is the kind of background you should have in order to feel comfortable taking the course. Um, so you need to know Python or be able to pick it up quickly. So if you already have experience with any other programming language, and if you don't have experience with Python, you should be able to pick it up relatively quickly. Like in the, we have around three weeks before the course actually starts. So this is plenty of time. Like let's say if you know Java or JavaScript or I don't know, C++, then you'll be able to pick up Python relatively quickly. Then uh, analytical and experimental mindset. What does it actually mean to, to have analytical and experimental mindset? It means two things. First, uh, to be analyst in, in, in your heart. Uh, it's like, like doing scrappy things, be curious, uh, just ask questions and try to find answers. Uh, so if you enjoy doing this and digging into a lot of um, data, so you will enjoy um, going through this course. So it means that if you have a pile of data and you want to know what's inside and uh, you can uh, formulate a question and you can use tools or you want to use to learn to use tools to uh, analyze this data, right? Yes, it's, it's like a specific approach of an analyst to do trading or investment. So like anyone can, can do investment just by reading news or following markets or etc. But if, if they can do data analysis, programming, and if they are analysts or they want to be analysts, uh, here is a specific way of doing this. Then you need to have interest in financial markets, but I think uh, since you signed up for the course, I, I don't think you don't have any interest, right? Why would you sign up? And then what is not required in any is any experience with trading. So from the list, I can see that the only hard requirement is being able to program, right? That's correct. Yeah. And like with all the other courses we have in Data Docs Club, now uh, we usually use GitHub for um, organizing all the content of the course, um, sharing the homework. And this is, so this is uh, the GitHub repo for this course. I'm going to share it with you right now, put it in chat, and then I'll also put later to the description of this video. So if you watch it in the recording, and um, you can see the structure um, of this um, of this repo. So there is um, like all the all the important links uh, and the syllabus. 
right? And uh, what will happen in three weeks when we start the course is you will need to go to this GitHub repo and then click on module one and then go through the content which will appear here. And this is what you do week by week. So here we'll have the actual content for the, co for the course, for the module one, all the code, all the important information for this particular module and also links to homework. And uh, like the same will happen with all the other modules. And yeah, there, there's some general information about the course. And we want to ask you to help us to spread the word about the course. And you can do that by going to this repo and I just shared the link. You can click on this link here. Hopefully everyone can see it. So please click on that link and then give us a star. So because I haven't started this repo yet, I am going to show you how to do this. So you open the repo and click on star. So I'll give you a bit of moment, a bit of time to also do that. And if you do that, it will help us to spread the word about the course. Because if all of you, I see that right now, 167 people are watching uh, this live. So if all of you go at the same time and give it a star, then the course repo will end up in GitHub trending. And if it ends up in GitHub trending, a lot of people will see it and will also um, give a star. But more importantly, they will discover the course and they will also enroll. So please help us spread the word about the course. And I think I was talking for enough time to actually, yeah, to give you time to do that. Okay, so did I miss anything about the repo? No, I think it's all there. Okay, and now, yeah, let's find out what uh, the course is about. What kind of modules do we have? Okay, so uh, the, the course is designed to have five models and one capstone project for approximately three weeks. We will start from module one and we will explore different data sources. Um, we don't have any databases of, of the data. We don't provide um, the data. So you will need to work uh, with the data by yourself. Select your data sources. You can replicate what, what we suggest and build on, on the same code that, that we will share. Then uh, while we will have um, data sources from model one, we will try to combine all of those data sources into one data frame. And model two is about um, analysis in pandas. So it is a regular work of an analyst, uh, probably with a bit of uh, specifics, uh, what data is there, right? that, that is, it's a time series, what features should be generated, how to join data sets, how to deal uh, with missing values. Then we will move to the model piece. Model three is about uh, building a model and we won't go very deep into the modeling uh, types. Um, there are different types of models. It can be a statistical model. It can be a very simple rule of thumb. It can be an ML model. Um, but um, we will show uh, some examples of models and what metrics you should look at. Uh, then when, when uh, you will have a model, um, model, we will try to build a trading system. So it's, it's a adding additional constraints to the model. When do we need to trade at what size um, and how to simulate the results, whether we are confident or not to use this model for trading. And the metrics will be slightly different uh, versus what we had uh, for model quality uh, on model three. And the last piece will be uh, automation. So we will try to move everything from Google Colab um, notebooks to Python files and um, combine them into to one project and schedule and the execution of this uh, one project or data workflow uh, on your personal computer or it can be deployed to cloud. Next slide, please. Um, so let's talk um, in more detail about modules. So first, uh, first module, it's an introduction, actually, and data sources. 
So we will talk uh, about data-driven decisions, about the philosophy of an investor, what's um, the landscape of um, potential investment decisions that you can make or I can make, uh, what's a general uh, concept of risk versus reward. Then uh, I will introduce Colab and show you how to download uh, data from a data source call, called Y Finance. It's a free data source. Then we'll talk briefly about APIs uh, as a main source of data, free versus paid APIs. There are a bunch of them and I wrote an article about it. And I also show a more complicated uh, ways of uh, getting data if you're an experienced pro developer probably you will want to do web scraping uh, for the data and get some unique data set that you need. And um, we will briefly talk about alternative sources, which are not listed uh, in a generic uh, data sets, but you may come up with your own idea and you may use this alternative data source. Next slide. So uh, during module two, working with the data in Pandas, we will explore core Python libraries um, that analysts usually use. That is NumPy. Um, most of our code will be done in Pandas. We will do graph uh, visualizations in Matplotlib, sometimes in Seaborn, and I like dynamic visualizations with uh, Plotly Express. It's extremely um, convenient and easy now with ChatGPT, it, it can help you. Um, then we will talk about different data types and manipulation with them. We'll try to enhance uh, the data sets with generating new features that may be potentially useful for us. We will do a data cleaning and we will try to do a descriptive analysis. So what features do we have in different data sets uh, and their distributions? So we will learn to make these uh, radar charts like you made, right? Sure, I can I can show how to do this. But I guess this is not what you commonly use for for stock market market analytics, right? Yeah, it's just a fancy fancy thing. I wanted to show one one radar chart and and actually compare all five of them, but I, then I, I found that uh, they, it, it's hard to show five different responses in, on one. A radar chart, uh, but I like cool visualizations. Um, so next thing is analytical modeling. Uh, we'll try to generate uh, some hypotheses from from the data, find some trends, ideas, and this is the hardest thing to do. So you need to read about it. You need to learn about some companies. You need to have some idea before. So I can't teach you just in one hour how to get how to source all these ideas. But when you have an approximate idea, we can try to frame it into, into some modeling exercise. Uh, so we will um, talk about time series predictions. We will talk about different types of models. Um, it can be simple hand rules or heuristics. It can be statistical models like ARIMA. Uh, we will see how we can extract trend and seasonality within one line of code. And we will try uh, basic um, ML uh, models uh, like regression, binary classification, maybe neural networks. We won't cover advanced neural networks like RNN, LTCM, GNN. So if we have uh, an experienced data scientist, uh, I'm really keen to learn from you if you can actually apply this for your capstone project and see how it's working for trading. Next. So then uh, when we have a trading strategy, uh, when we have a model, we will try to apply uh, this for a trading strategy and simulate the results. So first, if, if you don't have any experience, we don't require you to have this experience, but ideally when you start trading and when you bet your own money, you will think 10 times before you do this. So this is a really cool experience in my opinion. We will show different uh, trading app screenshots. Um, I use Interactive Brokers and Jiro. Uh, probably I will have more. Um, then we will talk about features of a trading strategy. So um, you will see some fees from a broker when you do trades. 
you need to uh, calculate profits, you need to do risk management, you need to do proper timing, trade size, combined predictions. So um, trading strategy is, is a next level of abstraction after you have a model. And of course, uh, we will discuss um, some uh, strategies and we will try to do a simulation based on the historical data uh, on our uh, model, whether um, if we apply that model in uh, some period of time in the past, we, whether we got some profits from that model. And last uh, but not least, module five about deployment and automation. Uh, as I have said before, we will um, copy all the pull up uh, notebooks to Python files so that they can be executed from the command line. We will talk a bit about persistent storage files uh, versus database. It is not strictly necessary here, but if you want to, to build a production system, uh, it is recommended to have some form of a database or if you have, if you want to have several users for it or if you want to build a dashboard on it. So you will need to have a, a database. Then we will try to automate everything. Uh, if we have a set of five uh, Python files and they need to be executed one after another, we will uh, do it uh, via cron jobs. You, you can also use some um, external tools for uh, workflows. Um, we will probably cover some of them. Um, and uh, when you have all of this automation, we will try uh, to show how you can monitor all of that. Whether uh, this system can send you automated email about trades to be made uh, or chat notifications in telegrams or even place uh, a bet or a trade uh, via API that is provided by a broker. Next. Um, this is, uh, uh, next three weeks it will be a project. Um, Alexei, will you cover this? I think it's- Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. So like if you took part in um, any of the Zoom camps we did previously, so usually at the end of the course, like there is practical material, or like there is learning material, right? But at the end, then you need to put everything in practice. And this course is no exception. And if you haven't taken the course, uh, our previous courses, we will briefly explain. So after you learned all the theory, you will need to actually implement something and you will do you will need to do a project and the way it's organized is you'll have two weeks to do the project uh, itself so which means going through everything you learned but on your own project on your own idea on your own data and putting all the code on github and then after these two weeks, you will also learn from your peers. So you will need to review three projects from the peer students, from your peer students. So this way you not only you will implement something yourself, but also you will learn from your fellow students. You will see what they actually did. And um, yeah, this is an amazing experience. And this is also how we evaluate the projects. So at the end of the peer review, we will take the mean score. Um, like there will be a bunch of criteria for evaluation, and then this is um, how exact uh, this is how exactly we are going to evaluate the projects. And uh, yeah, there is nothing to add here, right? Like did I forget? Anything? Yeah. Okay, so we are moving on. So next we want to cover ex uh, exactly how the course will be organized. So I think we briefly mentioned um, it, but uh, we'll now we'll actually talk about details. So the lessons for this course will be most likely live. So every Monday um, around the same time as today, um, there will be a lecture, it will be a live session with all the important information and it will be published on uh, this Python and Invest YouTube channel. So it will not be Data Dogs Club channel, but it will 
will be Python Invest, and I'm going to share the link right now here. So, and this is like so I don't forget to um, put it. Let me just do it right now. So if you watched it in recording, um, just go to description and you will find find it there. So all the live sessions will be published there. So and uh, or potentially some of these videos will be pre-recorded. And uh, yeah. So this will happen on Monday. So it will be published on YouTube channel and all the links will be published also on the GitHub repo that we talked about. And then, of course, you also will have a lot of questions about the content, about the homework. For that, there will be office hours. So it will be on some Fridays. It will be organized similar to this session today. Um, so there will be a Slido. Uh, link uh, where you can ask questions and then um, we will answer these questions and then I think we talked already about the projects what we didn't talk what I did not mention is we will actually have two attempts to do the projects is uh, first immediately after the um, lectures finish you'll have two weeks for the project third week for previewing and then if uh, you joined the course late or for some reasons you failed the project or you went on a vacation or there is another reason you did not uh, you could not take part in project attempt number one there will be a project attempt number two and the project is very important because this is actually how at the end we will decide if you're going to receive a certificate or not and if you complete the project, you will receive a certificate. If you do not complete the project, you will not receive a certificate. So this is the most important part of the course, the project. And let's say I remember um, at the beginning when we talked about the experience of the participants, there are some people who already are quite advanced, quite ahead of um, the rest of the students, right? So for you, maybe some modules or most of them will not be interesting right and you don't need to take all these modules in order to actually get a certificate at the end let's say if you already know most of the material you can just focus on things you don't know and then at the end do the project and this will be sufficient to get the certificate and um, yeah so this is how you find the videos there will be a playlist probably after today uh, it will be created it will be on uh, the channel Python Invest. It will create right now only this video, the stream for today, and we will be putting more and more videos as we go through the course. Um, yeah, I think I already talked about the certificate. There will be also a leaderboard because you might ask, why should I care about the homework at all? Because every module will have homework at the end. And you might think like, hmm, I don't care about the homework because like the only thing I need to pass the course is the project, right? So to give you a little bit of motivation and also to make it more fun, we will have a leaderboard. And the leaderboard, I will show it from a different course. Um, so this is our the course management platform we use. You will be using this platform for submitting homework, for submitting projects. And there is a thing called course leaderboard. And I'm showing you a different course, um, data engineering Zoom camp that is still happening. And this is how a leaderboard looks like. So there are a lot of people. And then there is a score. And we can see that how exactly this score is formulated. And this is. Um, so this is anonymized. We have no idea who is the gracious McClintock. Yeah. So this is a randomly generated name. Of course, you can change this, but we can see how exactly this score is formed, right? So they completed all the homeworks. Um, yeah. So we will talk about this uh, learning and public score a bit uh, later, but yeah, at the end they received 90 score, 90 points which is a combination of all these points. So there will be a leaderboard like that and you can actually change the name. So for example, if you if you want, you can put your real name here. So for example, Krishna, I assume it's a real name, but it can be anything, right? So it can be 
just a random name or your name or honey badger, right? Whatever you feel like putting there. And yeah, so this is the leaderboard and at the end, the top 100 participants um, after the project, we will put this on our GitHub, GitHub in where you can put like, um, it will be uh, public. So you can put your real name there. You can share your LinkedIn, your Twitter, whatever you want. So it will be like some sort of wall of honor in a way. And that's why we want to encourage you to actually do all the homeworks. And uh, cause like when you do that, you will get a high score and then you will be able to do choose to get a position in this um, wall of fame, so to say. Okay. Yeah, so leaderboard. And the leaderboard, uh, the, this course, they consist of this course you get for completing the homework, for completing the, the project. You also get scores for doing the peer review and also for sharing the progress, sharing what you learned. And this is something we will talk right now or maybe later. Yeah, I think it's a little bit later. Uh, in a few slides, we'll talk about what exactly learning in public is. But if you have taken our Zoom camps, you probably know. So this is how our, this the system I was just showing you. So this is how it looks like. Maybe it's better if I just go and show it on a live course. Um, so we still have, so most of the, Forms, so most of the homeworks are already closed, but there is still one um, homework that is still open. And this is how it looks like. So there will be some questions that you will need to answer. And then you go to this website and we will of course include the link to you on every, uh, in every module on GitHub, we'll include the link to the homework. And then this is how you submit. So there will be certain instructions, certain questions, you will need to answer these questions and then select one of the correct answers or maybe give a free text um, answer. There will be, for this course, there will be also uh, extra questions that require you to think a little bit and then share some of the ideas. Um, so this is something that we did not have in the previous courses. So yeah, you will see later. Okay, and for each homework, it's important to share the code to your homework on some public website such as GitHub, this, yeah, GitHub or any other hosting, code hosting system, but most likely it will be GitHub. And actually for the projects, you should only use GitHub because like everyone, it can be a call-up link as well, but for the projects, you can use GitHub. For homework, yes, exactly. Thanks for adding that. And by the way, uh, I accidentally spoiled it. So this is, I'm right now working on changing the interface for the system a little bit. So this is still work in progress, but soon it will look a little bit different from, from this. This is not what I wanted to show. Yeah, so this is the tab I was looking for. Um, yeah, so going back to learning in public. So as I mentioned, and you saw this, that in addition to points for homework, there are points for learning in public. What is that? So we want you to encourage to share everything you learned in the course, uh, be it the course content, or something you learned extra in addition to the course, or maybe an article you came across, or maybe a project when you review peer, your peers, uh, you found something new. So we want you, we want to encourage you to share all the uh, bits of knowledge you acquired through the course. And we call it learning in public. So we did not invent this term. So I think uh, it's, um, yeah, so this is, I think if you Google, learning in public. in public. So there are a bunch of articles why it's actually a good idea to do this. Um, yeah, there is even a book about that. Um, and um, 
I like this article by Swix. We actually had um, him on our podcast, Data Rocks Club podcast. I will quickly show you how to find this podcast. Swix. Yeah. So how to market yourself without being a celebrity. And so this guy who wrote this article, he's a big advocate of learning in public. And he actually goes into a lot of detail why you should learn in public. Uh, how do you make yourself known? What are the benefits? Um, so yeah, I suggest you should check it. Um, but there, there will be, we'll try to motivate you. So there will be like a good example um, of how it can actually help from one of the students. But here we encourage you to share everything you learned on LinkedIn, Twitter, blogs, whatever. And then there, there will be a field in the homework where you can put it. And for each link you put there in the homework, you will get a point um, on the leaderboard. And this is how it can look like. So this is from our data engineering course. So you just say, you just mention what you learned. Like there's nothing fancy. You just say, this is what I did. This is what I learned, and that's it, right? So it's nothing fancy. And this is, um, I really like this slide because this is a good, um, this is a good proof that this actually works, that this is a good idea to share what you learn in public. And this is one of the students from the Data Engineering Zoom Camp. He wrote this in general. Um, two years ago, roughly. So I'll give you a bit of time to read this if you haven't read it in other courses. Um, I copied this slide from uh, one course to another because I really like the story. Maybe I'm a fast reader. I've already finished that. But also, let's say if you're not trading professionally right now, but you want to do this in the future, then I highly encourage you to do that, to document all your learnings, because people who are interested in trading who might already do that or work at a company that does that, or I don't know, they belong to a community of traders. If you do that regularly, they will notice you, right? And it will open many doors. Anyways, I think that's more or less, we more or less covered everything so far when it comes to course logistics, the course content. And now I want to talk about our Slack, which is where the interaction between you will happen. This is where you can talk to each other. This is where you can ask questions. There you can, where you can help your fellow students and this is the most interesting part of the course. Um, and I will show, I will give you a tour around our Slack. So for that, I have this other browser with my fake account. So I will, no, it's actually not a fake account. Wait, okay, just to wait. So it's my real account. <laughs> I wanted to show you how to actually um, enroll in a core in a channel so maybe i will do now by leaving this channel and then i will so this is our slack and this is what you will see but with a lot fewer channels uh when you join slack because um yeah the reason i wanted to show a fake account so you don't see all the private channels and all that you would see it just slack with a few channels uh, I don't have time to log out, log in again. I will just quickly show you how to find um, a channel. So you go to channels and then there's a add browse channels. And you, of course, 
stock analytics zoom camp you might have to type the entire name and then you click join channel and this is where all the communication happens please make sure that you use threads so instead of so for example we want to reply to chakrash or Jefferson, so let's reply to Jefferson. Instead of hi, saying, hey, Jefferson, nice to meet you, you never do that. Because if you do that, like everyone will see this, right? So instead, so what you need to do instead is go here and reply in a thread. You see this button? and you reply here and never click on this so if you do this you just reply to jefferson i am apologies for mistyping your name i also showed how to edit the messages so if you just also do also send then it creates a lot of noise so people don't most people don't need to see that right so please don't send to channel if you see a question reply please reply in the thread so this will keep the discussion more organized and also there are some other things you should keep in mind like for example never share like never take a picture of something with your phone because it's completely impossible to read from a picture that you take with the phone like usually there is some error message that you can just copy and paste and again like if there is a long message a stack trace from python don't just post it to the channel first create a, hey everyone i have a problem with something and then in reply to your own message put the stack trace so it doesn't contaminate like the entire um, space here what else do I need to say? Yeah, I think that's the most important thing. So I show you how to find the course, uh, a few guidelines, how to communicate, use threads, don't take pictures of the code with your phone and use uh, for error messages, put them in a thread. We also have an FAQ document, which is still work in progress. I think we need to add a bookmark here. We will add bookmarks later here, so there will be a bookmark to the course repo. And then I think if I go back here, we have a FAQ document. So I think it's not populated yet. So there are no questions because this is the first time we launched the course. And yeah, usually before you ask a question in Slack, you should go check this document and see if somebody already had this problem and they documented it in FAQ. And also, like when you do that, we want to also encourage you to do that. That's why for um, contributing to FAQ, you will get some score points too for the little board. Yeah, I think that's all I want to say about Slack. Um, did you also talk, wanted to talk about Telegram, Ivan? I added it to the GitHub. Um, yeah, I think there, there is a link. Um, so we created the channel with the announcements. Um, it is faster to deliver. We can see your instant reactions um, and we will post um, all important announcements there. So if you can, please join that Telegram channel and uh, you will see uh, all messages from us instantly. Yeah. And you might also not want to have another app on your phone, mm -hmm. which is completely understandable. Mm -hmm. So if you don't, uh, if you don't feel like installing Telegram, registering there, it's fine because mm -hmm. all the announcements we make in Telegram mm -hmm. will be also broadcasted broadcast to the slack channel right but in slack channel there will be some discussions so it's easy they can announcements can easily get lost because of all the other messages so i actually would suggest would encourage you to subscribe to the course channel 
but it's up to you to decide if you want or not. One way or another, we will you will see the announcements either in Slack or Telegram. There is also a mailing list. Uh, you received an email before this course, um, before the stream started. So we will also use that mailing list to send you updates. Mm, right? Did I forget anything? All good. Okay. So then, uh, your last slides. Yeah, I have one slide. Um, some time ago, I created a, a page on Buy Me a Coffee. So if anyone wants to support uh, Python Best project, uh, you can um, make a monthly a recurring uh, su um, support with uh, two, five, or fifteen euros or dollars. And if you want to support specific projects, so I have a bunch of ideas and actually uh, added one, one idea today, run a course on stock markets. So if you particularly like this course or other uh, projects that uh, I want to write about, uh, please uh, support. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks also for this initiative. And if, if anyone likes the course, please do support. So I can say that um, when somebody supports me on GitHub for other courses, it's very pleasant. I can go buy myself a cheesecake and a cup of coffee and enjoy it and think of you, the students who are, were so happy with the course that decided to help the course with your own money. So this means a lot. So please do this if you find the course interesting. Um, I think um, one last thing before we wrap up and go to questions. Do we share the slides? Because if somebody wants to support you, they will need to have these links. Maybe I will actually post right now here. So you will find the link in the description of this video. But also if somebody wants to then, oh, where it is, go back to the slides. We probably need to put the link to the slides somewhere in the- yeah, I, will, I will clean up a little bit and probably create a PDF or, or share this slides link. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, it will be shared soon in, in one week. So. so probably this is the best place to put the slides, right? So cohorts okay. 2024. Mm -hmm. So we can uh, we can put the link to the stream that we had today, mm -hmm. this one, and the slides there. And then if you want to come back to the slides, periodically check this link. So soon we will put the slides there. And I think uh, now it's time to answer your questions. I see that we don't really have much time, but um, Ivan, if you can stay a bit longer, maybe we can sure. spend like extra yeah. 20 minutes answering questions. Let's do this. Okay. So, interested in hearing about Zoom Camps, Tech Stack, Open Data Sets for Stock Analysis, Incorporation of LLMs, and recent advancement in the field covered. Is it a question or a statement? Because we talked a little bit about it. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's a complex question with uh, several statements. So uh, I, we answered about tech stack. So we, we don't uh, use a, anything fancy. It is uh, Google call up. Uh, probably we will do VS code when we move to automation uh, and explain Python, not more than that. Open data, data sets for stock analysis. Uh, we, we don't own any data sets, uh, do, do not share that, but we will show ways how you can download them. Incorporation of LLMs, I showed a few examples today. Uh, probably you can try it uh, for yourself. I actually use LLMs for news summarization, but I, have, I couldn't find any good way of using that for trading because they are not stable, not generating trading signals for me, but probably you can find something interesting and use this. And recent advancements in the, in the field covered, um, I don't know what to answer this. I, I regularly read books and, and uh, articles, uh, but uh, what do you mean um, about recent ad advancements? Probably not, probably it is a generic course. It, it is an introductionary course uh, covering 
many different fields, so we won't go too deep or too recent in this course. Oh, thank you. Will, question from Sandra, will the course teach how to trade stock using models? Can these steps also apply to crypto or forex trading? Thank you. Yes, this is the exact goal um, that we, we try to create models, we try to simulate and we try to place some trades. Um, these can be applied to any um, assets that you can trade, crypto, forex, commodities, options, whatever you can imagine. It's just different data sources uh, you may need for this and different models. Uh, this specific course will be about stocks and probably about biggest uh, US stocks, but it doesn't mean that you can't trade Indian or Mexican stocks. So uh, you mean like this uh, Google, Apple, or Alphabet, like all, yeah. all these large companies from that yes. are almost. That's, that's what I'm using for myself. Uh, it's easier because for me because I'm following them. But if you live in another country and you know more about that specific company, so it is really actually very interesting to learn if if you can build something, simulate, and show some profitability on your local market or your specific vertical. Um, that's that's really great to see. Because the majority of news that I read, they are about a small bunch of uh, big uh, American companies. Uh, so, so I would uh, like to learn more about other um, companies as well. I can try to answer this question. How much of stats, financial market and trading knowledge is required? So uh, from the prerequisites, I don't remember mentioning any of this, right? So the only thing that we actually need is Python and analytical mindset. Did I answer yeah. that correct? Uh, yes. Um, so we encourage you to to read and follow some uh, the markets and have some idea, but no fundamental or scientific financial market knowledge is required. If you have the scientific and structural project around it, this is really great to have. Uh, not uh, much statistics is shared. I will show some basic distributions or basic statistical model without explaining uh, everything that is um, done under the hood. I will just show how, how it, to execute and to see the results. And trading knowledge, which we don't require this as well. Mm -hmm. So I like this question from Emmanuel. Would I learn to develop a profitable stock training bot after this course? This is an ultimate goal to, to create. Um, it is a very hard thing to do and many bright minds of, of the universe are trying to do this. So I hope um, some of us can create this profitable um, trading bots and apply it for their own uh, capital. Maybe can you share? some of your own personal um, achievements in this space? Like so, I, I know that you've been doing this for some for quite some time. Yeah, so I, I, I started probably four, four years ago uh, or three years ago during COVID with uh, algorithmic trading and uh, the, the whole market was, was growing quickly and I made maybe around 40% uh, of growth in just two months, which is a very, very good result even on the, uh, during the grow, growing market. And so my strategy was a day trading. I, I invested for, for one week. The problem with my strategy was that I didn't have any risk management system and I lost half of the profits uh, in, in one month after it. Um, since then, um, I decided that I need to build a fully automated strategy. But before that, I wanted to learn more, dif more of uh, different aspects of uh, financial markets. And that's why I've been writing for three years uh, long grids. Uh, and so I implemented a, a passive uh, investment portfolio with, uh, with ETFs. Uh, so hopefully after the course, I will do it uh, in, in a similar manner as, as you uh, are supposed to, to do. So I will create my trading board and I will put it into production as well. Uh, we are going to do this weekly, right? 
So each uh, one. I think uh, currently uh, I have um, this schedule uh, in my head. First three weeks are weekly. So it's 15th, 22nd, 29th of um, April. Um, then probably two, uh, two weeks break and then uh, for fourth and two weeks break for fifth. So something like that. But it may change and when I will have the dates, I will post it on GitHub. And I just received a comment from Johanna. So Johanna, when we did a podcast episode about stock trading, um, she mentioned that we should include a disclaimer in the podcast episode. And maybe it's actually a good idea that we also said that because like the previous question asked profitable and we are not actually liable for any losses you make during the course. And we will probably have a proper disclaimer in the course content. Um, but yeah, so this is you, what you should keep in mind that uh, losses can happen and uh, you cannot sue us for these losses. So be prepared, but in the long term, um, so usually what happens is, yes, there are losses, but long term it works, but we cannot make any guarantees. Yes, so no profitability guarantees. Uh, we are not professional market participants or uh, companies who are providing financial services. We teach you how to do algorithmic trading, but we do not teach you what to buy and sell and when. So it is your uh, own project. And please think uh, wisely uh, how to trade with your own money. So I guess this is what we should have included in the slides, but we will definitely put this in GitHub. And another comment from Johanna that in Germany, you're actually not allowed to give financial advice if you don't have any proper background, proper certification. And uh, yeah, we don't, right? We don't have uh, any proper certification. So yeah, we will include that. Uh, but I, I guess we answered this too, right? About weekly. Yes. Okay. By the end of the course, will I acquire enough of, um, of data analyst and investing skills to begin my own analysis and invest as a beginner in both topics? I hope uh, that you will have enough uh, to start and I will design um, all code and call ups in a way that you can just copy that notebook, you can run it under your credentials and it should work so that you can adjust parameters, you can adjust uh, markets or companies or whatever and uh, it, it will be much, much easier for you to start and do it from scratch. I think we answered that. Will be will will we be able to use this for non-US markets like Indian? Your answer was yes, right? Any, any market, yes. Will the cover the review and application of technical and fundamental analysis? Um, I will show uh, how you can generate technical indicators from the data you obtain from APIs, and I will. Uh, have a few ideas on fundamental um, features. I wrote an article about it on earnings per share. The problem is that it's not easily available for free. So you need either to pay money or to, to write a script in code to, to obtain a long history for fundamental indicators. But uh, the answer is yes, you will see the examples. What are your own successes in this matter? How does your model trade? Which return? Which sharp? How many factors do you use? Do you briefly answer that? But maybe you can expand on your answer. Uh, so the, uh, my own successes, yes, uh, it, it was like 40% uh, return in, in two months when overall markets grew maybe 10, 15%, just because I, I did it uh, every every day and I sold uh, just one week after I bought it and I traded 20% of my portfolio. That's why the iterations were quickly. 
quicker than the generic market. Um, I do not remember uh, Sharp. I, I didn't compare at that point of time and I didn't have a good benchmark. Now I have a passive investment portfolio and I will explain this risk reward curve uh, and uh, your personal investment options that uh, you may have and uh, you may want to compare to. Um, how many factors? It was about 200 factors that, that I used. Is the course focused on sentiment analysis of the financial news or rather on portfolio optimization, classical quant trading methods? I would say neither of, of, of this. So I wrote, I think, two articles about uh, getting sentiment analysis from news and analyzing with uh, LLMs and ChatGPT. I couldn't find any good strategy just because news are very, very biased. They are about big companies and probably they are published late. Um, and I also have another article about portfolio optimization. Um, I won't cover much of it. Probably one of the trading strategies when we move from one prediction to several predictions in, in the model, in, in the strategy, uh, I will show uh, that, that you um, may want to, to use several predictions and combine them into the portfolio and achieve better results when you trade uh, not as not an individual stock but as a portfolio. Uh, questions from Chakresh. <laughs> Is this a solo based learning or will will be collaborating in groups? So First of all, there is a Slack group where you can collaborate with all other other students, uh, all the other participants, uh, the instructors too. Um, so it's not solo in this way. So it's it's not like you're just completely watching the video in isolation and cannot talk to anyone. So you can um, definitely talk to your fellow students. Um, historically, all the projects in our Zoom camps were solo projects. Um, which it the, the main reason was because it's easier to evaluate scale because we have a lot of students in the courses um, and with peer reviewing it's much easier to review solo projects rather than group projects this is not something Ivan and I talked about so I assume it would be solo projects too but um, yeah, maybe we can talk I, I, I think uh... It is hard to, to, to design a mechanism when people can find good group match and when everyone is, is uh, working as expected in a group. Um, probably in the next iterations of the course we will try this, but for now it is a solo project and a peer review. And uh, what I also answered, so when this question was answered, asked in uh, um, a different course, in data engineering course, so what I said was that you can, of course, collaborate, but make sure that at the end, uh, like collaborating on the ideas level, not on the uh, let me use your code level, right? So you can discuss things, you can have regular catch-ups, you can hold each other accountable, but at the end, the code you produce should be your own code. So you cannot simply just go and copy the code of your friend and say that it's your own, right? So you can definitely work in groups, you can definitely exchange ideas, you can use Slack, you can form peer groups. Um, but at the end, yeah, you should yourself write the code, you should yourself deploy the bot, uh, you, you, you should yourself do all the things. Okay. Uh, question from Kate, can you finish the course earlier and get certificate earlier or do you have to follow some timeline? Yeah, we do have a timeline especially for the uh, projects because the projects are peer reviewed and the way it works is everyone submits their projects up to a certain date up to a certain uh, point and then what we do is we look at all the people who submitted the projects so it's a pool of projects and then for each uh, of the students we assign three projects from this pool so it has to happen uh, uh, at the same time so then this process can work. So it means that you can finish the course earlier, but you cannot get the certificate until 
you do peer reviews. So technically you can start working on your project right now. You can finish the, the project, but you will have to wait uh, to submit it. And then you will also need to do the peer review at the exact week when it's open, right? And then this is the, the only thing when uh, that you cannot do earlier. The rest, like if you can do your own research, um, yeah, definitely. Because like the only thing that is important for graduating, for getting the certificate is the project. And of course you can do it earlier. But I think since uh, like this is the first time where we launch the course, all the materials need to be prepared, recorded, or they, they happen live. Also, we don't really have um, the criteria for peer reviewing uh, yet. So which means if you start working on a project now, you might not follow the exact review criteria we will have in the future, right? So it's a bit tricky now to be complete earlier. Do you have anything to add, Ivan? No, I think, yeah, let's yeah. move to the asks, do we need to, to open an account at some stock broker? We do not require to do this. Uh, for myself, I learned about uh, stock markets 15 years ago, but I started trading only maybe four years ago. And uh, I, I'd say I could do it just 15 years ago with, while I had $100 in my bank account and because uh, this is much more impactful personally. But we, we do not require to do this. But if we want to trade, we need to have a, an account, right? Yeah. Like, uh, like if, if, if if you want to trade, you need to register an account with some broker, download an, an app or uh, trade with a web um, terminal or a web, uh, web page. Yes. And I actually also have a question now when I see this one. So I don't have an account in the, any broker, but I have an account in Revolut, which allows you to throw to to to, to buy some stocks and then sell, sell some stocks. Do you know about Revolut? Is yeah, I, I use I use Revolut. I use it for as my banking application. I I think I, I had some period when when I traded a bit with Revolut. For myself, it was only a few stocks available there, not like 1,000 stocks. Or if I want to trade some rare or small or medium-sized US stocks or non-US stocks, that was first thing. And second thing, I wanted to separate my uh, current accounts uh, uh, versus my savings accounts. So that's why when I move my funds uh, savings to the investment account, I normally do not take any of that back. So it's a long-term investment for me. That's why I separate and do not trade with everybody. But so we will need to open an account. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Does this course have a valid certificate of completion? So the course will have a certificate of completion or, yeah, how do you, like if there will be a certificate. I don't remember if we call it certificate of completion uh, or not, but there will be a certificate valid or not. Uh, like it's up to you to decide how valid it is. There will be a PDF with your uh, name on it and signature, yeah. Yeah, it's it's a way we're not a university, but uh, the brand is growing and people can see your your project. Uh, so you you have all the evidence, and I think analysts or traders they they can quickly understand uh, whether this certificate is is valid or not. What are Ivan's personal trading strategy performance over the last few years, and what is his own personal trading setup like? Is it something you wanted to, because we already talked a little bit and maybe this is something you can all talk in more details uh, in the introductory lecture course. Yeah, yeah, I think I covered all, almost everything. It, it's just active trading three years ago and currently passive trading. What are, it's a question from Emmanuel, what are we learning the skills of trading stocks and analyzing financial market market using Python libraries? I think yes, right? That's exactly yeah. what we are learning. Yes, that's correct. Will we focus only on trading stocks, or we will also be able to find investment stocks for a little longer, for a little longer, or stocks that are in momentum? 
I guess maybe the question is like short term trading versus longer term trading, if I understand it correctly. Yeah, I think you can you can design you can design any strategy you want. You can you can trade one hour in advance, one day, one week, one month, one year, ten years in advance. It is harder to, to simulate if you have something uh, that you can check on the even one year. Uh, so you might think about some like medium uh, term strategy probably we won't cover any uh, anything regarding high frequency trading and streams and which is like seconds trading so yeah it's a uh, um, you can design what you want to try we do not advise on, on a particular type of a strategy or project you, you can take so let's take three more questions and uh, wrap it up. So what is quants? Quants, it's a quantitative uh, analyst, researchers, professional uh, market participants, or people who work in the financial trading industry in a few uh, highly uh, profitable and well-known companies. So once I wanted to be a quant, but then I took my job at Google. And now I'm doing this uh, for my personal uh, own interest. It's a question from Conrad. And I think this is something you talked about uh, briefly touched in the podcast. So isn't daily trading generating commissions due to buying and selling activities? My understanding is that we are going to learn how to trade daily multiple times. That's a very good and valid question. I think this is the top one thing that you need to consider when you build an algorithmic trading thing. And there is a trade-off. More trades you, you make, more commission uh, you will get. For, for my experience, even when I, when I got 40% uh, returns, I think one third of my returns were eaten by commissions. So without commissions, it would be like 60, 65% returns. So you, you need to balance this. You, you need to, to, to find some solution to trade on, on more uh, on the deals that you are more confident in or limit number of trades or simulate. So it depends. How expensive are these? Uh, like how, is it like some sort of percentage that you need to give to the broker or exchange? I think it, it varies by broker and by uh, exchange and uh, normally it's uh, half a euro half dollar one dollar uh, on the contracts mm -hmm. yeah. normally absolutely i love this question i need a lamborghini for the summer am i on the right place i would say definitely not <laughs> i feel joke in this question so that it's it's not a course about how you can get co rich quickly unless you're a genius and you have a capital and you make 10x from this capital um, but uh, i would be very happy for you if you can do this but you need to have uh, capital you said right so you already need to have some money sure yeah and some money means like almost enough to buy a Lamborghini without the course, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess that's all we can handle, can answer today. I'm trying to stop sharing my screen. Oh, finally. My computer, my Zoom did not want to stop sharing the screen. Hey, um, anything we want to say before we finish the call? We wish good luck to everyone and hopefully everyone can submit all home assignments and complete a project. Don't think too much about project start working early and produce uh, some good creative piece of work. I'm checking when the date, when it starts. So it starts on 15th of April, yes. which is in three weeks. And we are looking forward to seeing you there in three weeks. And right now, yeah, enjoy. Like if, uh, if you're celebrating Easter, enjoy the Easter, Easter holidays. Um, and you can also pick up some Python and see how to, to have uh, analytical mindset. Yeah. 
which are the prerequisites for the course. Thank you. See you soon. See you soon. We will uh, communicate through the email, through the mailing list, through Telegram, and periodically check GitHub page for updates. Right. And Slack as well. And subscribe to the Python Invest YouTube channel. Okay. So that's all for today. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. And uh, goodbye.